This sneak peek will journey into Sleeping God's Primeval Peril. It's a print and play game. I'll give you an idea what the game is about, what the components look like, and what the mechanics of the game are. I'll also show you how to get started with this game if you're ready to get a snapshot of what Sleeping Gods is all about, here on Legendary Tactics. If you're here, you're likely interested in or anticipating the release of Sleeping Gods, a campaign game set in a strange world in 1929. It's a storybook game, and today the designer released Primeval Peril, which is a short print and play standalone that came out with the Kickstarter. This is a campaign game for two players set in the world of Sleeping Gods, and it uses the same rules. Primeval Peril is set on a dangerous river that winds through lush jungle. It includes new characters and stories so that nothing from Sleeping Gods' base game is spoiled. So let's talk about the mother game. Sleeping Gods is an atlas game, and each page of the atlas represents a small portion of the world that you can explore. When you reach the edge of a page and you want to continue in that same direction, you simply turn to a new page and sail onward. More on that later when I show you the storybook for this game. Sleeping Gods is a storybook game. Each new location holds wild adventure, hidden treasures, and vivid characters, and the choices that you make affect the characters in the plot of the game and may help or hinder your chances of getting home. Now, because the designer, Ryan Lockhart, didn't want to reveal too much from Sleeping Gods, he created five new crew members for this little adventure, and he wrote a separate storybook. Almost everything in Primeval Peril is new, but there are a few things that show up in Sleeping Gods. These could be the Easter eggs. The adventure cards you gain in Primeval Peril will be found in the market deck in Sleeping Gods, and a few of the enemy cards, which are slightly altered from Sleeping Gods, also show up in Primeval Peril. Let's take a look at the components. If you're interested in getting started with this, I've put the link to the PNP in the description below. You'll have to start by printing these components. So right from the outset, it's the artwork for this game that caught my attention. You can see that even as a print and play, they've spent time producing a very quality aesthetic. You're gonna want to use a color printer for this one for sure. On to the rule book. So this, this is a spin-off game. It comes with its own four page rule book. It's very accessible and it gets you right into the game. You'll need to have a look at the full rule set though for Sleeping Gods, but helpfully this guide offers you a snapshot of the main rules that you'll need. No surprise here, it's most of them. There are some changes from the base game, but since it hasn't been released yet, that shouldn't be a problem. The fourth and final page of the rulebook shows you how to read the shipboard for the harpy. Mostly you need to know about ability cards and command tokens. Let's move now to what the goal of the game is, and this is moving into more of the base game for Sleeping Gods. So remember that this game is still in development, so you may see some changes too before this game gets released, but this is just a very quick look at the game. Your goal in the game is to survive the dangers of the wandering sea and find as many totems as possible before time runs out. The Hectacron, a giant sea monster, does not wish the gods to awaken and is slowly following you, gathering strength to destroy your ship. Well, that certainly sounds pleasant, but I've always found that campaign style games like this one are the most fun when you're not winning easily, and I really like a challenge that plays like a puzzle that a team needs to solve, and it sounds like there's all kinds of options and all kinds of choices and lots of customization in this game that will take you through to the end. The main focus of the game then is your shipboard. Your crew board lets you know what the skills and abilities you have are and how effective you are with the weaponry. You can also equip ability cards to customize your own experience. Let's move to the playing of the game. So in this game, a turn consists of a ship action by moving to one of the five ship rooms, drawing an event, taking two actions, and passing the captain token to the next player. The ship actions include the galley, which is a place to gain cards or tokens, or discard and remove fatigue. The deck focuses more on command and search tokens. The quarters allow you to draw abilities and gain command tokens or remove command tokens. And finally, the sick bay lets you draw an ability card and gain three command tokens. You can also restore one health to a crew member here. If we're looking at actions, they include one, travel, which allows you to move the ship in an, into a new region, two, exploring, and this allows you to investigate one of the locations in your region, and this is done by reading from the storybook and choosing your own adventure style. You get to pick one of the choices, so usually they involve overcoming a challenge or some form of combat. The third action option is to visit a market location in the same region. 
Fourth and lastly, you can visit a port in the same region. So that's a great place to get some R&R or to fix up the leaky timbers on your ship. You can also spend XP there to upgrade crew members. This game comes with a 38 page rulebook and the intention of this video is not to read the whole booklet to you. This is just a snapshot of what the game is about. But overall though, it really looks like there will be a lot of choice, customization and storyline to work through. And I'd also suggest that the rulebook doesn't look too dense. It's easy to navigate and I feel that even just at first blush here, um, I can get through it very quickly and get a really good uh, grasp of what the essential mechanics of the game are. Along your journey, you're going to face many challenges. You'll need to do combat with some of these critters and you'll need to complete quests. The event deck will add some flavor to your story. So. Back to the main goal of the game. Your focus is to collect totems, which will determine how your story ends. Okay, so here's the juicy part of this game. Let's take a look at the first hook for this story. The bear was thick. Storm clouds, tired of their perches, were sinking to the earth to sleep. A small fishing vessel thrummed through the still waters as its captain, Jim Twine, stood at the helm watching the sea. John, his first mate, stood beside him, waiting for Jim to hand over the helm. John had guided the harpy through the San Francisco Bay many other times, even in stormy weather. But something felt wrong tonight, and Captain Twine found himself stuck to the brass wheel handles, which were now dripping with condensation, like the ship itself was sweating with anxiety. So by day, I'm an English teacher, and when I read this, I can't help but feel how the writing brings the scene to life with some really beautiful personification. The vivid imagery of the scene makes me want to jump right into a playthrough. It's a joy to really see elegant writing come together with a game that offers a way to play through the journey and become part of the Sleeping Gods experience. I look forward to trying not only this mini campaign, but also the full game. Let's check out one more excerpt, some dialogue this time. An older couple, a woman with anxious eyes, and a man, as still as he was silent, stood nearby squinting at the fog. Are we near the pier? The woman asked as she leaned closer to her husband. Her voice was strangely muted, as if they were all stuck in a supply closet. It should be out there, Mum, said John as he leaned over the railing, undaunted by the gloom. It's impossible to see in this fog said Twine. But don't worry, Mei Ling. We'll get you and Shen back home quickly and safely. Mei Ling shivered despite her thick pilot jacket and scarf. I can't stand boats. I shouldn't have come. Oh, it'll be worth it, said John. We can get our stuff back, all of Dad's gear that he left in the house. Shen nodded as he took Mei Ling's hand to steady her. Twine heard a sudden splash. Something was thrashing in the water ahead. Was it a shark? He slowed the engine. There's someone out there. As the harpy closed in, Twine saw not one but two people floundering in the dark waters. He slowed the boat and John rushed to pull them aboard. We'll leave that passage there, but you can see how it's building some nice suspense. And I think the game is really going to be the better for it. If this video was useful or interesting to you, please consider subscribing so we can sail onward to more exposés on Sleeping Gods, or if you hit the like button, that also helps us at Legendary Tactics. Thanks so much for your time.